today I learned something interesting about shields. Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiator, and you may assume that I know loads and loads and loads of stuff about arms and armour, and that's kind of true, but there's still loads and loads of stuff I don't know, and I'm the first to admit that. I'm not one of these people who pretends to be an expert on everything. I'm quite, um, quite specific, actually, about what I would regard myself as an expert at. I'm an amateur at some of the things, and there are many topics on this channel which I just say... I don't know, okay? And sometimes I get an expert on. And talking about that, I'm gonna get some experts on some things that I am not experts on relatively soon. But what did I find out about medieval shields? Well, first of all, I have to say that this information comes with great thanks to Augusto Bourbrandt, who's featured on this channel before with me and Dr. Capwell at the Wallace Collection. You may remember him if you've watched all of my videos. And uh, as a thanks to him, I've put a link below to his Pinterest. Um, and his Pinterest is this kind of repository for interesting arms and armour, particularly armour, it has to be said. That's his uh, fascination um, of information. Now, what did I find out about shields? Well, quite simply, you may have heard me talk about, over the years, a type of round shield called, in Italian anyway, a rotella. Now, the reason we talk about rotella, us HEMA people, is that the rotella features is in a number of HEMA sources, for example, Marozzo and so on and so forth, a bunch of Bolognese sources and also other Italian sources as well. Now, what is the Rotella? If you'd asked me this, say, two months ago or even two weeks ago, then I would have said it's a round, late medieval and Renaissance Italian shield that is domed. That is, it is convex on the outside, concave on the inside, and it is held on the arm, strapped with two or three straps usually, with a bit of a little pad usually behind that. So fairly conventional middle to late medieval um, sort of mounting. It's not boss gripped or anything like that. Now, Rotella are very, very interesting because they are the only mainstream type of shield which we have treatises for. So people who want to use sword and shield, if they want to use a HEMA source for, you know, what did people say in the day about how you should use a sword and shield, they go to something like Morozzo and they see what Morozzo does with the sword and rotella. And then they might apply that, for example, to the heater shield. Some people might go one step further and try and apply it to something like a Viking era shield, an Anglo-Saxon type shield, which is boss gripped. Now, as I've pointed out in previous uh, videos, I think it's important to look at the source material that we have. That is what HEMA is. HEMA is the use of historical sources to inform our judgments and opinions um, and practices, in, in my case and lots of other people doing HEMA physically, now. So we look at historical sources. If you're not using a historical source, it's not really HEMA. You could call it something else. You could call it experimental archaeology or even just reenactment or LARP or whatever. But HEMA is specifically the use of historical sources to inform our judgment on how to use period weapons. So many people from different periods of interest to look at these um, sword and rotella sources. Now, as I say, I always would have said this was a round domed shield. And why would I have said that? Well, quite simply because that's how they're shown, particularly in 16th century art, in Renaissance art. Uh, but additionally, there are some surviving. Some are made of steel. Uh, sometimes in museum catalogues, incidentally, these are referred to as rondash. I don't know where that comes from, but uh, period fencing treatises call them rotella. And uh, equally, they're, they're shown in treatises, they're usually domed. They're sometimes in museum, they're usually domed. The Wallace Collection, for example, has steel examples and wood and leather examples. The general assumption is that the parade ones were made of steel and ornamented, or made of metal anyway, and ornamented, or sometimes perhaps metal faced on wood. Whereas the kind of, the combat ones, the ones for actually taking to war, were generally made of planks of wood, which were carved into shape to give that domed shape and um, butted against each other and then covered in leather. Sometimes perhaps other things like canvas and leather, so layers essentially. Uh, and they can be quite thick and there's a, wooden, a wood and leather one in the Wallace Collection where the uh, leather and material underneath has degraded such that you can see the wood planks inside. And you can see it's pretty thick, sturdy construction. Much the same as knights' so-called heater shields or triangular-shaped shields or Norman shields would have been also. So, 
As we say, uh, as I've said um, a couple of weeks ago, I would have said that these shields are round and convex. So what did I find out and why am I making this video? Well, quite simply, I found out that actually lots of them were flat. And now <laughs> this is a bit like the world is round. <laughs> no, it's actually flat. No, I'm not going to get into that one, folks. But what I have found out is that a rotella can in fact be flat. And I literally did not know that. I had never particularly researched them. So in my defense, I have spent many, 20, more than 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, whatever, looking at medieval and Renaissance artwork. And I'd never really paid an awful lot of attention to Italian shields of the 15th and 16th centuries, even 14th century as well, actually. It's a kind of a particular area. Now, before I go on, I have to point out this only really applies, or only ex except, certainly what I'm saying in this video, only really applies to Italy, okay? Not to say there might not have been shields like this outside Italy, but the use of shields by um, by lightly equipped, relatively lightly armoured and equipped troops in Italy is a very particular thing. I have mentioned this in previous videos. Now, one, we, one thing we find is when we look at Italian art, we often find these very oblong shields, long oval shields, even sometimes long rectangular shields, a little bit like a Roman scutum, but held more like a pavis. You could call them a pavis, but they seem to have been thinner and lighter than a typical pavis that most people would think of. And they don't have exactly the same shape as a German or a French pavis would have. They look distinctively Italian. Um, so the Italians had particular shield styles. Some people might argue that they are sort of hand-me-downs from antiquity. Perhaps they're harking back to antiquity, um, trying to look like things that they've seen in classical art. This is a much bigger subject for a much, much bigger video. But the key point I want you to take away from this is that the rotella, and a lot of Hema people I think won't know this, the rotella isn't always domed. If we go back to the 15th century, there is a lot of medieval art, uh, Italian art, which shows round, flat shields. And moreover, flat ones survive. There are flat ones surviving. Uh, and this totally blew my mind because I have always thought that round shields in that era certainly in Italy and just generally in Europe, the rotella was domed. But no, newsflash, it can be flat. Now, why is this important to know? Well, it has some knock-on effects for our interpretation of the uh, techniques. Some people, myself included, would have noted that a domed shield, a convex shield, uh, covers more angles of opening um, when you're fencing with it. So when you're fighting with a domed shield, it's possible to cover the outside line and a good part of the front line. When you've got a flat shield, you have to be a little bit more mindful of how you close those lines. Additionally, the inside line to get inside the shield, particularly at the shield arm, but also just to, to get inside to thrust or whatever, is more exposed with the flat shield. So on paper, it sounds like I'm saying that domed shields are better than flat shields. And I kind of think they are. Whether we're looking at the Carolingian Empire or whether we're looking at the developed Rotella in the 16th century, even uh, lands connects uh, uh, occasionally shown with round shields. Generally speaking, it does seem a domed shield offers a lot of structural integrity, strength, and in fencing terms, it closes more lines and protects your shield arm better. What's the disadvantage, and Why would people make flat ones? Well, you know what? You go and try and make a round shield right now. Do it this afternoon or tomorrow morning or whatever. You're going to find it is a hell of a lot more work to make a domed shield than to make a flat shield. And so quite simply, I kind of think that if you're going to equip a whole buttload of troops really quickly, really easily, it's dead easy to make flat shields. Really not that easy to make curved shields and a lot more difficult to make, a lot more investment of time and resources to make um, complex shapes like a dome or any of those kind of fluted convex um, kind of jousting shields or anything like that. So my current thinking, and bearing in mind I am not an expert on this topic, and I, um, I don't know if there are any specific experts on this topic actually, I don't know that anyone's done a huge amount of research on specifically this, um, but once again, thanks to Augusto and the other people who were commenting in the thread on the 15th century armour page on Facebook. Um, complete news flash to me. I did not know that there were flat um, rotella in Italy in the 15th and perhaps 16th century, shown in art and surviving. 
absolutely fascinating stuff. Um, so there we go, now you know, and if you want to make a medieval Italian rotella, you can make it flat, um, and you can uh, make it pretty easily flat, a lot more easily than making it domed. I hope this has been moderately interesting, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you back here soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.